So now I've got the cap off, if we look straight down into the oil, you can see that fluid looks pretty dark, so well due for a change. Hello, welcome to the video. So better late than never, the Ape is coming out of its extended winter slash coronavirus hibernation. And I'm doing a bit of work to get it ready for the road again, get it ready for an MOT because the MOT is expired. Today, I'm gonna to be changing the brake fluid. I've already had a look at it and you'll see when I bring the camera around, the fluid in the master cylinder reservoir looks really dark. The Piaggio factory manual, as a lot of manuals say, suggests changing the brake fluid every two years. I don't always stick to that rigorously. Um, I think there's, there's an argument for leaving it longer if you can test it and find that the moisture content is okay. But in this case, I, I don't need a moisture content tester. It looks horrible, it looks really dark, so I'm gonna change it and I thought I'd bring you along. And what I will say before we go any further, the, the old Ape isn't particularly clean at the moment. Uh, I, I'm gonna do a video about cleaning it as well, uh, show you what I, what I do in terms of the cleaning process. So we'll cover that separately. So do bear with me if you find it to be slightly mucky today. Okay, let's go into the cab and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, here we are in the, or looking in from the left-hand side. So to get to the master cylinder reservoir, uh, and I'll show you where it is once we've lifted this up, we need to lift the seat up. I'm actually gonna take it out. And what I've done is I've, I've loosened this off already. In fact, I've taken the bolts out, but I'll just talk you through what needs to happen. So at each end of the seat, there's under here, and my finger is there. There are a 16 millimeter nut that you need to take off. The studs are captive into the seat frame. And then on the right hand side, same again, there's a stud captive into the seat frame here, a 16 mil nut. And then because the seat belt mounting is here, on this point here, there are two, I think they're 13s, two uh, 30 mil bolts that go through those holes into the body. You'll notice as well, I'll just shine the light down there. I've already taken the battery off. I've taken that out for charging. You don't have to take the battery off to do this job, but it's gonna be easier for me to, to take it off as I wanted to put it on the charger separately anyway, and then have a bit more space. So if you're taking the battery off, negative or the black lead always comes off first, and then the red positive lead. The clamp down here is a 13 millimeter and you remove that by basically having one 30 millimeter spanner in one hand underneath the floor and then another on that one and that's how you take the battery clamp off. So with those four fixings out of the way, you can then hinge the seat forwards. And as with a lot of things on the Ape, uh, don't take this the wrong way, it's not uh, what you might call a precision fit. So the seat can then flop forwards like that. I've got the handbrake off. Uh, the handbrake, in case you're wondering why I said that, the handbrake is here. And if it's forward, then it kind of impedes the amount that the seat can go forward. So the handbrake's off, that goes forward like that. A single, probably a 13 mil again on this stud here. And then the spare wheel can come out just put that in the back for now and then the bar of this the front bar of the seat is kind of wedged into this bracket here so it's then a case of wiggling it out like that and we'll put the seat in the back as well why not Okay, now you can see the brake master cylinder reservoir. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but to my eye, that brake fluid is really dark and so well overdue for a change. So what I'm gonna do first of all is put a towel down. In case you're not familiar, brake fluid is quite nasty to paint. So that's the reason for the towel. Now, if it's thin enough, Put 
handbrake on again to prevent it rocking everywhere as I'm moving that in. Brake fluid is quite nasty to paint. This line goes under here, down here and over to the front. Uh, it, it also, in case you're not familiar, I, I guess there are brakes on all three of these wheels. They're all drum brakes, so they all have a wheel cylinder and we'll obviously need to let the fluid flow through to each of those. I'm going to be using a pressure bleeder, not under particularly high pressure, but I'm going to be using a pressure bleeder to help me out with this. I'm working on my own. Um, if you have someone who can help you or if you don't have a pressure bleeder, you can do this with a simple piece of tubing on each wheel cylinder as long as you have the tube going up from the bleed nipple so you have a column of fluid so that if there's any backflow of fluid it is fluid that goes back not air um, and you can also pump the pedal to help the process if you're pumping the pedal pedal go easy don't press it all the way down because you can damage the master cylinder seals and then you've uh, changed your brake fluid but you're going to have to change it again when you change your master cylinder so this isn't a particularly sophisticated braking system. In fact, it is wonderfully simple. Um, this is a, a Bosch master cylinder, it looks like, and it says use dot three fluid. I'm actually gonna be using dot four. In case you don't know, dot four is backwardly compatible with dot three, so that will be absolutely fine in this system. So this video will also be relevant for you if you've done some brake work or if you've had a burst flexible hose or something like that and you need to bleed the system because essentially what we're doing is bleeding, although we're not actually, we don't actually have any air, the pedal feels pretty good, so we don't have any air in the system, but we're putting new fluid in at the top and pumping it or forcing it all the way through so that we've replaced the fluid throughout the entire system. There's loads of different ways of doing this, but the way I would, I like to start is to take as much of the old fluid out of the master cylinder reservoir as possible. cap has a little strainer in it. I'm going to put that to the side somewhere. So now I've got the cap off. If we look straight down into the oil, you can see that fluid looks pretty dark. So well due for a change in my opinion. Okay, so stage one of this process for me is to remove as much of the old fluid as possible from the master cylinder reservoir. To do this, I'm using this Mighty Vac, which is a vacuum pump. So it'll suck all the fluid into that reservoir. That's full already, so we're going to need a couple of rounds of this. I don't know whether you can tell. I think these are actually dual circuit brakes. So the, the front wheel is on a separate circuit to the rear wheels. And that means that the master cylinder kind of has two chambers, which communicate with each other when the fluid level's high, but when the fluid level's low, they're, they're kind of two separate chambers. So it's quite a challenge to get the fluid out of the right-hand chamber. Because I can't get the tube over the baffle to get into the top. So I think we're gonna leave it there. That's, that's got an awful lot of the fluid out, but not all of it. So I put my vacuum pump to the side, clear that up later. The next step then is to put some fresh fluid in the reservoir. Now we can tell that there's quite a difference in colour. Right, I've got my pressure bleeder ready now. So, brake fluid in here, cap on there, pump here and then a quick release here with what's, what turns out to be a pretty much universal cap for most, most systems, although uh, on some of the Japanese ones where it's kind of a bayonet style fitting that uh, doesn't fit, so you've got some other options there. I've bled the line, so this line's full of fluid. Uh, you can probably see it's got a slight straw color to it. That's the color of fresh fluid. So this cap goes on here needs to be fairly tight because we're using air pressure to uh, to bleed the system. Uh, 
and just pump it up a little bit. I, I don't go above uh, 10 PSI in general, certainly not on a vehicle like this. Just it needs to be enough to force the fluid through. And basically that's it for this part of things. We need to check from time to time that we've still got plenty of fluid in there and we need to top up the pressure as we let fluid through as it drops. So now let's set up on one of the wheels. Okay then, here we are at the front wheel. Cleaned most of the cobwebs off, but not all of them. As I say, we're gonna do a proper clean. So pop the bleed nipple cover off. What I've got here is a very sophisticated, you may have seen it before if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, an old squash bottle with a hole drilled in the cap, two cable ties to hold the tubing in place. I think it's five mil tubing. The bottom of the tubing is under the level of the brake fluid there. So that pushes on to the bleed nipple. And then what I usually try and do is have it going up for a bit. So there's a column of fluid rather than air should we have any backflow for any reason, although we shouldn't because we're under pressure at the other end. Now in this case, I was about to tell you they're nine mil, but they're not. Is eight. Thankfully, they aren't too tight. And we open that and we just catch the bottle as it wants to fall over. Just open that a little bit more. Usually you'd have a little bit more thread, so you wouldn't have that leakage out of the bottom of the bleed nipple thread that I've got there. But in this case, there isn't much, so you can see it's dribbling out a little bit. So that's why I put the paper towel there. I don't know whether you can see. The last job I did with this device was uh, the ABS pump on the Audi. So this has actually got fresh fluid in it. I don't know if you can see the difference where the fresh is mixing with the old but there is a substantial difference. So what we need to do is wait. And hopefully we'll start to be able to tell the difference in color. This is gonna take a little longer than the rear wheels because it was that front section of the master cylinder reservoir that I couldn't drain completely of old fluid. That's going to the front wheel. Just went to check the master cylinder reservoir, that's fine. There's no trace of the old fluid in there now. You probably noticed, you probably tell I was maybe a bit confused by how much air was coming out, because I thought these brakes, the pedal felt pretty good. So I can't tell whether the air's sort of coming round the threads. Yeah, there definitely was some air there, wasn't there? All right, we'll keep going for a little while then. The fluid's definitely clear now. I don't know what the volume is in this system, but it won't be a great deal. The fluid's clear, that's uh, a bit of a silly thing to say because the fluid's always clear. The color looks much better. It looks like newer fluid. I'm just flicking the hose there to catch any try and knock any bubbles through and it did seem like quite a lot came through which was I'll admit it came as quite a surprise to me just tapping the pedal a few times as well turns out this is uh, this has ended up being a brake bleeding video as well as a brake fluid change video two for the price of one I don't know whether loosening this is actually letting some air in somehow, though it shouldn't because the whole system's under pressure. I think maybe it is. 
I just pumped the pressure up a little bit there, so we're back up to about 10 psi. Okay, it's a good while now since any air has come through. Yeah, that's air being drawn in around the around the bleed nipple somehow, I think. Okay, tighten that off. Remove this as quickly as possible. Let the fluid drain back into the bottle. Give it a clean up with some brake cleaner. And pop the cap back on and on to the next one. Okay, so onto the rear wheels now. I'm just gonna show you one of them. You'll be able to uh, work out what to do for the other side, I'm quite sure. I'm gonna use, just for fun, I'm gonna use the factory or the, the tools that come inside the uh, the Ape to, to, uh, to do this. So this is 19 mil. Just loosen them off before we lift it up. Okay, little tab there. Despite this being wood, there is concrete underneath in case you're worried about what on earth I'm doing. The wheel on the other side is chocked up. And we're off the ground. Oh, look at that, should have pre-prepared that, shouldn't I, and cleared up the cobwebs. Never mind, that's how it is. I'm not going to be going under it, but nonetheless, it's probably a good idea to have more than one thing holding a vehicle up. I'm going to do a full video on a sort of a, an inspection before MOT type process, but while you're under here, it's a good idea to have a general look around at the lines. We're, we're focusing on brakes, so let's have a look at the lines in particular. So this one going all the way up here, then there's a flexible section just up there. So get underneath. Have a good look at that for chafing. Not particularly well built from a sort of a chafe correct, uh, prevention point of view. So you can see this handbrake cable here is rubbing against that line and then it's pretty close to that edge there, which is quite sharp. So what we'll probably do later on is get a piece of tubing and just put that over the top of the line just to help protect it. It's essentially the same process again. I can't see a great deal. You can probably see more than me via the camera, to be honest. Can I fit my head in? Just. Uh, 
Okay, you can see some horrible fluid there. Well, horrible dark fluid. And hopefully we'll gradually see it become lighter. I might try and do a fancy little uh, time lapse so you can see that more obviously because it's quite hard to appreciate when it's happening quite gradually. So I think that's happened just there. The fluids started to, to run much clearer. And again, just back to the master cylinder and the pressure bleeder, just to check that we've still got plenty of pressure in there. Okay, that, uh, that pressure bleeder was fine. Just needed a few pumps to top it up. This one's behaving much better than the front wheel. It's not we haven't got those air bubbles coming in to, uh, to confuse us. It's confuse me at any rate. Okay, head back in. Just tighten that up and that is that one done. Right, so I showed you the left side. I've gone ahead and done the same on the right side. I didn't bother videoing that because I figured it's exactly the same other than on the other side. That went fine as well. Probably took out, where's it gone? In addition to what I drained uh, from the reservoir before I started, probably took out that much fluid, which, well, definitely took out that much fluid. I think that's just over half a litre is a guess. I rather overfilled my pressure bleeder, but never mind. So now it's a matter of disconnecting the pressure bleeder. Release the pressure first. The maximum line is just there. It's on a slight slope. You can see the fluids up to the top there, but I think that's pretty much on the maximum line. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's us done for the brake fluid changing part of things. Let's put some bits and pieces back in then, shall we? I really want to leave the seat off because I am going to be doing a thorough clean of this, as I said. But actually, to get it outside, I'm going to have to have somewhere to sit while I drive it. So let's put the seat back in. Before we do that, let's put the battery in.
10 mil for the battery clamp. Take the handbrake off again. That's in at that. The Eagle Eye of you will notice this has still got the plastic on the bottom of the seat. It's only done 1,195 kilometers from new. Most fixings on here have a standard washer and a shake proof washer. If you've driven one of these or seen it running, you will know why. I sound like I'm being very critical, don't I? I absolutely love this. Even that's not long enough. Use the spanner. It's a driving experience like nothing else uh, and it's all the better for it. Okay, now we can tip the seat forward, being careful of the seat belt. And that's the seat back. The base of the seat back. So it's nut there, nut there, two bolts here. I'm not gonna put those in because I, when I'm giving this a proper clean, I'll take that out again. But I, I did need it in place, obviously, to be able to, uh, to move the appé to where I want to wash it. When you've finished with your brake fluid change, then it's always a good idea to do a road test. I'm not doing that on this today because it doesn't have an MOT, so it's not legal to drive on the road. And you can give the pedal a quick feel just to see if it feels uh, as good or, or better than it did when you started. Hopefully it does. If it goes all the way to the ground, then you might have a bit more bleeding or, or some, out, um, some air stuck in the system somewhere that you need to get rid of. So did you spot my deliberate mistake? The last thing to do, or well, the thing to do, probably best to do before you put the spare wheel in actually, is to put the tools back. But I'm sure I can do it without taking it out again. So the wheel brace, navigates its way around all of the wires. And goes in there. The jack arm goes next to it. And then the jack itself needs winding down as far as it will go, which in this case is quite difficult. And then it's got its own little parking space just under the seat. And when you've got it in position, wind it back up again, which will hold it firm and stop it vibrating. So sorry that was slightly out of sequence, but there you go. That's the brake fluid change done then. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope it was useful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. There's gonna be a fair bit more APE related content coming up. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Bye for now.